Hey guys, welcome to SS Unitex who sell this side and today we are going to see about the inline data set in the data flows. So in the previous videos we have seen about the data flow and we have seen about the data sets and we have also seen the debug option inside the data flow. So if you haven't watched the previous three videos of this video series, so I would strongly recommend to watch those videos. So let's get started with the data set. So inline data set is used when data set is not reusing again. So as we have already seen, we have created multiple data sets. So for example, we have created one data set for like employee data set. And this employee data set we are using in multiple places, multiple pipelines and multiple data flows we are using. Then we have created that physical data set. But let's assume we are having a requirement and we want to use a data set only a single time and we are not going to use that data set again so on that scenario we can use the inline data set option so go to on the browser and we'll try to see in the practical so as here so this is the data flow that we have created so let me go on the source side and under the source we can see here source setting so in this source setting we can see like data sets and inline data set so we have already created the data set option and this video is totally dedicated on the inline data set so let me select the inline data set so while we are going to select the inline data set so here it is asking the data set type so as our source is blob storage and input holder and under this we have this file that is the employee in india and here go to the edit so this is the file which is the comma delimited mainly so here we can go and in the inline data set type we can see a lot of options there so we need to select delimited text in our case now once we have selected that then we are required to select the link service so under the link service we can select the ssu testing now here options we have already discussed so let me leave this go to the source option and under the source option here everything is changed like here we can see the option which we have already seen inside the data set so let me quickly go inside the data set of anyone and i can show you the property so this is the property that we can see here the same property is available on this source option here we can see the file path so we are required to browse the path and go to the input folder and then we need to select that file let me click on ok here we can go downside and we can see option like first row as header that we can find here so let me select this checkbox because here we can see in the source side the first row which is the header of the table now go back to the data factory here under the projection we can see the import schema option so this is not our label because your debug option is off so let me quickly try to on this for one hour and it is getting the cluster ready so it will take little bit time we need to wait now as we can see this is on so we can see the import schema option is available we can click on the import schema so we can click on import directly here so it is importing the schema so under the projection we can check the schema of the source file so this should be having the four columns as we have seen in the file now as here we can see that now go back to the now go to the optimize tab and here the partitioning that we have already discussed then we can see the inspect so under the inspect here we can see like the order and the, the column names and after that the type now go back to the data preview option so under the data preview option let me try to refresh so here as we can see the three rows those are available in the source so all those we can see here so this is the inline data set now we can go in the sync side and under the sync we are not do anything like we can directly use the data set here inline data set and the cache so the cache option is available in case of destination so don't worry for the cache as of now we will be going to see this cache in detail in our upcoming video now we can do the publish and let me go to the blob storage 
and here go to the output folder here under the output folder we can see these two files so let me try to delete all these two files here and go back to the azure data factory and here it's publishing so we'll try to execute this inside the pipeline that we have created in the last video so we can directly go on the pipeline so now let me go in the pipeline and we'll try to create a new pipeline and under that pipeline let me call the data flow activity so this activity will be going to execute your data flow that we have made the change so this is the same one now we can try to debug it so this will take little bit time so once this will be executed one file should be available in the destination with all the data it is executed successfully now go to the blob stories and here let me try to refresh it so here we can see the file and under this file we can go and go to the edit and here we can see all the data that we have seen in the source site so now it is working properly but here under the data set we can see there is no new data set is created because we are using the inline option in the source one so that is the inline that we have selected so this is all about the inline data set so thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video please subscribe our channel to get many more videos see you in the next video